What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here for PackersNews.com, live on Facebook from sunny, if the windows weren't closed, Philadelphia, where I'm taking a brief sojourn with my family. But as is per my tradition, I thought I'd jump on here and talk some Packers with you guys for a few minutes and see what's on your mind here at the end of the day on, is it Wednesday? Wednesday. Um, not a whole lot of news coming out today. Free agency is set to kick off a little bit. Obviously, a lot of questions swirling there. The combine set in a little under a week today, so uh, thought I'd uh, toss some Packers. Nelson, what's up? Kevin, good afternoon. Aaron, hello from another Aaron. Good of you all to show up. Jennifer, hello. How are you? Different background. Jonathan, I am in a hotel in Philadelphia uh, on uh, a trip with my family, but I always have time for you folks. Davenport, Iowa, what's up? Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, a Doubletree hotel. It's very nice. Deborah, hello. Thanks for joining. Lenny, hello. New Mexico, thanks for joining us, Lewis. Brent, ready for the combine? Yeah, I mean, as, as ready as one can be. Um, you know, it's a big process of breaking down as many prospects as you can. Obviously, you're never going to get to all of them tape-wise. I'm trying to read about as many as I can, and then next week we'll start to get to know some of the guys and start to see uh, what their athletic testing uh, turns out to be, start being able to kind of solidify some kind of a draft board. Uh, <laughs> what do you do during the day? That's a great question, Juan. Um, I obsess over the Green Bay Packers, so you don't have to. Do you think 42 will be back next year? Aaron, great question. I know uh, Morgan Burnett was on Sirius XM uh, yesterday talking about his impending sojourn into free agency. And if it's so hard without knowing where Brian Gutekunst is going to place value um, positionally and or uh, player-wise. If I had to guess, I'd say no. Um, but we'll see. Perhaps they'll, they'll value his uh, veteran presence and want him to be there when they implement this new defense, even though he doesn't have uh, experience with Petten or in the scheme. Um, he is a vet, clearly been in the league a long time. Um, he's clearly still a force in run support, uh, still able to take on some of the top flight tight ends in man. So that's not something you cast aside lightly. But you also have to take into consideration that his services will be uh, sought after in free agency. And his people know that, and he knows that. So unless they can somehow convince him to take a, a team-friendly deal, which I don't see him kind of going for in his last kind of bite at the apple, so to speak, uh, contract-wise, um, I'd be surprised if he's back. Now, maybe he gets to the free agent market and doesn't like what he sees, and he ends up coming back. That's a possibility. But I do think they'll let him explore the market. Uh, thoughts on Packers pursuing Colvin from Jacksonville to help with the cornerback position? We've talked about it several times here. Uh, again, today I know the news did come out that Jacksonville is planning on letting him walk. I think it makes a lot of sense for the Packers. Now, we'll see how will, how far they're willing to go to sign somebody who will – undoubtedly have a bit of a market around him. I think he'll get he'll generate interest from a lot of teams. Um, and I don't know how enamored the Packers will be with him, but I think that's definitely somebody they'll be looking at and someone they'll want to get in on. Now, again, whether they're ready to outbid anybody for him, I'm not so sure, but um, there's no doubt in my mind that they'll be looking at him. Uh, Doug Martin, I would be very surprised. Talked about him yesterday. I'd be very surprised if they went after a running back in free agency. I just don't see them allocating the free agency uh, capital that they have at running back. I think they, they will be happy with what they've got. Now, if a talented back falls to them in the draft unexpectedly, then maybe they look uh, at adding a running back, but I would be surprised if they went the free agent route. Cushing from Houston, Daniel, I highly doubt it. He's old, he's injured, uh, he's one strike away from a year-long suspension. Um, I'd be very surprised. Do you think the Packers may look at Blaine Gabbert as a backup? Yeah, I think probably maybe they do their due diligence there. I'd be surprised if they actually signed him. Um, but, you know, you never know. I mean, I suppose after uh, as bad as um, Brett Hundley looked at times last year, you really can't discount anybody or count anybody out or dismiss anybody. But Gabbard doesn't seem to be the type of, of quarterback they would like. He's a tall, statuesque uh, pocket passer, and that's – you know, not traditionally the kind of guys that they've brought in, but you know, there's always a first time, so you never know. 
It seems like you believe Packers won't spend money. Lenny, that's not true. I think they'll spend money. I think they'll be very judicious in their spending. Um, you know, I, I don't think people realize that you know, just because Brian Gutekunst is there and he said he's going to, quote, be aggressive in free agency, um, I don't think he's going to be stupid about it, which is generally what happens early in free agency. A lot of these names, a lot of, especially the big-time names that people kind of bandy about, those guys are going to get paid lots of money, and they're going to get paid early on in free agency. And I don't think the Packers are going to be uh, in on most of that. Now, again, we've never seen Gutekunst operate. We don't know exactly how he's going to go about it. He could surprise us all, including myself, and pay ridiculous sums of money up front. But you got to remember, there are teams with, out there with 60, 70, 80, even the Browns who have $100 million worth of cap space. The Packers can't compete with that. They're going to let you know things kind of die down from that first wave when you'll see – insanely huge overpriced guys go and then they'll kind of sift through that second level of free agency and i you know not saying they they're not going to spend money but there's I, i'd be absolutely floored if they uh offered a ridiculous contract in the first 24 hours of free agency that's just not how they're going to operate pass rushers are coverage players your opinion please i'm always of the opinion that uh, it starts up front. You want disruption up front. You want a pass rusher. But that said, I think you can't box yourself in, and you can't say we've got to get a pass rusher. So you pass on, say, a great corner or a great safety and take a lesser player on your board just because you have to have somebody to rush the passer. I don't think that's a good way to operate, and I don't think the Packers will operate that way either. Um, now, if somebody like Davenport or Landry is sitting there at 14, I think, yeah, they'll probably pull the trigger. Um, but if both those guys are gone and, say, Jackson from Iowa is sitting there, I think they take him. Get Pete Doherty to make one of these with you. I'll, you know, I'd love to. Um, I actually just got a program that allowed me to do Facebook Live with a partner uh, at a remote locale. Because obviously I live in New York and Pete lives in Green Bay. Uh, but we'll be doing them hopefully a few times over the off offseason. Um, Tom Silverstein and Ryan Wood will be at the Combine with me. So I'll probably do a couple with them as well. Uh, sit in free agent, do you pick him up? Daniel, uh, I talked about that yesterday. I'd be absolutely shocked. Not as long as Mike McCarthy is still the head coach. They need to get a pass rusher. Without it, the defense will not improve. Mike, I think they need a disruptor. There's no doubt about that. And that most likely comes uh, from said pass rush, from an edge rusher. Uh, but you can't discount. Maybe they find a safety. Maybe they find an interior lineman who um, offers that disruption. But uh, I tend to agree. Yes, they probably do have to look at pass rush first and foremost. But you can't allow yourself to be boxed in. Uh, best player available still the mantra? I would tend to think so. Um, although, you know, for as much as Ted and the Packers and the media around it uh, have talked about that for years, it's no secret that Ted also looked at uh, need. You know, Ha Ha Clinton Dix was a need pick. Brian Bilaga was a need pick. Those are first-round picks that where they had big holes that they had to fill. You know, it's not like he always just kind of goes away from that formula. Don't forget, when uh, B.J. Raji was selected at number nine, Crabtree, the receiver, was rated as the top player on their board, and he went in the next pick to Oakland. That was uh, a case where they were transitioning to a 3-4 defense. They desperately needed a nose tackle, so they took B.J. Raji. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not a strict thing, but more often than not, yes, they probably are going to look best player available. <clears throat> What's the status of Sam Shields' tattoo? Matthew, that's a great question you have to ask Sam. Is Davenport the best edge rusher in the draft? I don't think so. Um, I think Chubb probably is. And I'd even take Harold Landry before Davenport. But I think Davenport is talented. There's no doubt about that. Let's see. In what round of the draft do you see us drafting a wide receiver? I wouldn't be surprised if it was second round. Again, uh, they've had great success there the second round. Um, I definitely think they'll look on the second day. Um, but, you know, if someone doesn't fall to them, they're not going to reach. Uh, maybe they wait till day three. I would be surprised if they did it at 14 on day one. But you never know. Raji needs to come back ASAP. Are they going to release Cobb or Nelson? Edwin, I don't think so. Um, I think they'll restructure Nelson, and I think they'll leave Cobb alone. But you never know. Um, but no, I, I would be very, very surprised if either one of those guys gets released. I think Jordy Nelson will most likely have his contract restructured, and that will give them some cap relief. Does the number 14 pick have good trade value teams uh, maybe seeking a quarterback? I think that's the question. How many quarterbacks go in the top 10? I don't think most of these QBs should be going in the top 10, but I think a lot of them will because teams are desperate for quarterbacks. So if 
a bunch of QBs go, and let's say one falls that a team down in the 20s loves, absolutely loves, and can't believe he's falling, then yeah, there's a possibility the Packers could drop down, pick up an extra pick or two, and uh, or a bunch, and then yeah, they, they get their pick of the litter, so to speak, on the defensive side of the ball with the, the subsequent you know dropping of talent um, defensively. But that really depends on how that top 10 shakes out. Simeon as backup. I saw someone posited that this morning on my Twitter feed. Um, I think he, uh, the former, or soon to be former Denver starter, uh, is exactly the kind of guy they should be looking at to bring in and compete with Brett Hundley. There's no doubt about that. I don't think he's going to come in and light it up, but I don't think anyone expected Nick Foles to come into Philadelphia and light it up. Uh, but to get a guy with starting experience who can run an offense, has played in the NFL, um, and push Brett Hundley, I think that's exactly what they should be looking at. Uh, why pick up a backup? They still have Callahan. Well, Edwin, I think if they had any intention of letting Callahan be the backup, they would have allowed him a chance to play last year during the very long stretch of Brett Hundley's struggles. Um, you know, I, I wanted to see what Callahan could do, but it's clear that they've determined that uh, he's not an NFL quarterback, at least not yet. What are the chances of Fitzpatrick being the backup QB? Christopher, I think they're as good as any. I think that's another example of a guy who they absolutely need to pursue to try and you know, come in, back up, and either push uh, Brett Hundley and or take over for him. Because, um, look, is he a great player? No, but he's, he's shown that he can be productive, uh, at least in stretch for a stretch. And he knows, again, he started in the NFL. He knows how to run an offense. And he can keep you afloat in a way that Brett Hundley couldn't um, last season. Watching from the Atlanta airport. What's up, man? I'm in a hotel in Philadelphia. Uh, have you had a chance to talk to any of the new coaches yet? Dale, not yet. My first shot will be next week in Indianapolis at the Combine. Uh, Gary, we talked about Aaron Colvin a little bit earlier. Make sure you watch back when I'm done, but uh, I think there's a chance. Um, really depends on the financials, but I think there's a chance. Uh, Peter, Marcus Peters, uh, as far as a trade possibility, uh, I'd be surprised if they gave up a draft pick. Now, with all the noise around him, I'm starting to think maybe it's a possibility they just straight out release him. And if that happened, then maybe they, they take a look. Maybe they take a shot. But I'd be surprised if they gave up a draft pick for him. <laughs> McCarthy's choice to use Hunley both got to go. Timothy, that's just not true, dude. He doesn't pick the quarterback. He doesn't pick the 53. That's Ted Thompson. Ted Thompson gave him that quarterback. He had to use him. I mean, I don't. people keep saying this about McCarthy. Uh, McCarthy went to bat for him publicly. What else is he going to do? Well, you know, uh, we got Brett Hundley, and uh, I don't feel too good about it. He was never going to say that. So, you know, he sank and he swam, mostly sank, with Brett Hundley at quarterback. That's who his GM gave him. Uh, far of tobacco Rogers, JJ, that would be amazing. Moncrief from the Colts at wide receiver. Uh, Giff, I think that's definitely a possibility. Um, although I do think he's going to get paid. I don't know how high the Packers are going to be willing to go in the free agent wide receiver market, given that they just paid Devontae Adams $10 million per. The Packers, a great playoff team next year. I think they have a chance. Well, let's see how the defense shakes out. It's awfully early. I'm sitting here on February 21st. But with Aaron Rodgers... Absolutely, they should be. Uh, what are the odds of Lamar Jackson being available in the second round? Phil, I tend to think they're pretty decent. Um, I don't think he should be. I think someone should take him in the first, but we see stuff happen every year that we can't quite understand, and Lamar Jackson dropping to the second wouldn't surprise me. Would the Packers take him there? I would be surprised at that, but um, I think he's an immense talent, and I think somebody should snatch him up sooner rather than later in the draft. Possible O-linemen in free agency. Uh, the one name that I've kind of picked over, uh, there's, there's two actually. There's Smart, the offensive tackle down in Miami, uh, who started down the stretch for them at right tackle, who I think would, uh, would be able to come in and at least play those first six games while you know Bulaga is going to be out. Um, because he'll most likely be on physically unable to perform. And then also Justin Pugh, uh, the soon-to-be former Giants O-lineman, former first-round pick. He's played all along the offensive line for the Giants. Uh, has played right tackle. He could step in and, and, you know, be your starter for a stretch at least. They're after me. The Philadelphia police are coming after me. Uh, with that, I'm going to go join my family in the pool. So 
Thanks so much, everyone. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. Make sure you're checking PackersNews.com for all the latest. I'll be back here on Facebook Live uh, tomorrow. In the meantime, hit PackersNews.com and have a good night.